This is the Paper Plane Challenge. For this challenge, uh, the first thing you're going to do is choose from three challenges to test your paper planes against. Then you'll fold five designs, five different designs, and you'll test each design by gathering data in a data table. Once you've gathered all your data, you'll form a conclusion to see which design best met the challenge. Step one is to go ahead and pick the challenge that you'd like to tackle today. Challenge number one, design a paper airplane that can travel the furthest. Challenge number two, design a paper airplane that can fly in the air the longest. And challenge number three, design a paper airplane that can fly the farthest while holding three pennies. Once you've chosen your challenge, you'll want to set up your data table to collect the information based on your challenge. If you scroll down to the data table, you'll find that column number three is blank. Depending on your challenge will change what you put in that header. If you chose challenge number one, you can type in distance flown. If you chose challenge number two, you can type time in the air. And if you chose the third challenge, type distance flown. Again, for this step, you'll need to make sure that your data table's ready to collect information. If you chose the first challenge, type distance flown in this third column. If you chose the second challenge, you can write time in the air. And if you chose the third challenge, type distance flown. With your data table set up, it's time to create your five designs. You'll want to click the link in the directions above to go to the website called Fold and Fly. This website includes dozens of designs of different paper airplanes, and it lists some of the design's strengths. Your job is to choose five of the designs and follow the video or the written instructions to fold your five paper airplanes. Again, for this step, you'll scroll down to step number three and click on the link for Fold and Fly. That'll take you to this website, Paper Airplane Designs, that includes dozens and dozens of different designs that you can use in this challenge. Clicking on any of the different links will take you to that design, and it'll list the folding instructions. Simply follow along the instructions to fold your plane. Most of the different designs also have a video guide so that you can follow along the video and how to fold your plane. One thing to note is that each design on this website has a name. For example, this is The Basic. If you chose to design The Basic, down in your data table, underneath Name of Design from Fold and Fly, I would put the name of the design, The Basic. Make sure that you are naming all of the designs for designs one through five. At this point, I would recommend pausing the video, go to the website, choose your five designs, and fold your five paper airplanes. Now that you've created your five paper airplanes, it's time to test them. To test your paper airplanes, you have to start in the same place. You're going to measure the distance from where you start to where your plane ends if you're doing challenge one or three. If you're gonna do challenge two, which is how long a plane can stay in the air, you'll want a stopwatch. Uh, most phones have that feature baked into them, so have the stopwatch app or the clock app if you're on an iPhone, to go ahead and work as a stopwatch. Now, if you're measuring distance flown, again, pick a spot in your house where you will always start. Then take each of your planes and give them a toss. You might need to do it a few times to give them a fair throw. If your throw wasn't effective or if you know you could do better, you can always throw it again and put in the better data. One thing that might be a challenge is actually measuring the distance. You have a few options. One option is to use a ruler. You can put the ruler at your feet 
and starting at your feet. And so for example, if you started throwing here, you can use your ruler and then slowly move the ruler towards the paper airplane, keeping track of how many centimeters your paper airplane flew. If you don't have access to a ruler, that's fine. Use your feet. Simply put one foot in front of the other and count how many feet your paper airplane flew. This would also be a great place to pause the video and go test your five designs. Don't forget, you have to include your data in the data table. You'll also want to record any observations that you made while you were testing your designs. Your final step is to write your CER, or your conclusion. You chose a challenge, either how far it could fly, how long it could fly, or how far it could fly while holding three pennies. You tested your paper airplanes, and now it's time to decide which design best met the challenge. Remember that a CER includes a claim, evidence, and reasoning. This should be at least three sentences. For your claim, answer the question, which design best met the challenge? Don't include evidence and don't include the word because. Simply answer the question, which design best met the challenge? For your evidence, include data from your experiment. Perhaps it's how far it flew or how long it flew. And don't include just one set of evidence. Include multiple pieces of evidence. Name the designs. The basic flew 16 feet while this other design flew 20 feet. Make sure that you're including multiple pieces of evidence. Again, don't include the word because, just state the evidence. Finally, the R in CER stands for reasoning. This is where you explain how your evidence supports your claim. If you said that the basic met the challenge the best, well then your evidence should show that. Explain how your evidence proves your claim.